Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're gonna talk about tips and tricks for the Excel 2016 exam. I have a notebook full of things I wanna talk about, and it starts off by saying, take a deep breath. Yes, this exam is probably gonna be difficult, and yes, there's gonna be functions, and yes, there's gonna be things that you're not sure about, but the worst thing that you can do is to get in your own head. Take a deep breath, make sure mentally you're in the right state as you begin this exam, or you really could cause your demise on this exam. The next thing you should know about is the exam itself. There are gonna be seven projects. You're gonna have 50 minutes to complete all seven projects. From my experience, the first project is often the most difficult, and there's gonna probably be seven tasks for you to complete. Uh, I think Certiport does this just to kind of trip you up, they give you those harder questions in the beginning so that when you move on to project two through project seven, you're a little bit shaky. You're not sure mentally they've gotten in your head and they're trying to cause you to do things wrong. So uh, if you're not sure, the great thing is you can mark it for review and then move on to the next question. And at the end of the exam, if you still have time, you will be able to go back and look at those questions you marked for review. So use that feature. My other advice to you on the exam itself is pace yourself. Uh, I've seen too many people waste too much time on one question, 10 minutes trying to figure out a function or something, and then they weren't able to finish the exam. Pace yourself in the exam. Again, it goes back to marking those questions you're not immediately sure how to do for review and moving on and then going back if there's time. If I can give it an award to whoever wrote the exam questions for this test, uh, I would because they did a fantastic job writing these questions. What they've done is not only made the questions difficult to process, but they mask tasks that they want you to carry out in the question. You have to be able to read the question, interpret what they want, and then carry out the task. So read those questions carefully. They're not gonna call a sheep a sheep in the exam. They're gonna try and trip you up with the wording of the question. Formulas and functions are a difficult part of this exam. I know that people, when they talk to me about the exam, they, they just get stressed out about these formulas and functions. But what they're gonna ask you, there's no mystery. They've already told you which types of functions they're gonna ask you on the exam page. And I'll go ahead and throw a link to that exam page in the description. So you don't have to be caught off guard. I've also recorded a video on all the functions and formulas that you could see. I'll put a link to that in the description. So uh, be prepared. None of the formulas have to catch you off guard. And then if you're looking for some other resources, I'm so thankful my students have Gmetrics for this exam. What a great way to practice for this exam using their simulation software. And it really will help you get ready for the exam. In addition to that, I have some books that I would recommend. I'll throw those in the description. And then another resource is my playlist on this exam and I'm adding videos to that all the time. I'll go ahead and throw that link as well in the description and I'll put a card up so that you can easily access that information. As you begin your journey to take the Excel 2016 exam, one of the first places that you should go is to the Microsoft exam page that Microsoft has provided for this exam. As I scroll down through this page, it tells me the five different domains that the exam tests on, and it tells me the percentage of each of those domains that can be found on the exam. One of the struggles that people have with this exam is the section called Perform Operations with Formulas and Functions, which it tells me accounts for only 10 to 15% of the exam. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this domain, and within this, it tells me every single function that I could be asked to perform on this exam. What this page does is allows me to prepare for this exam, and when I take the exam, nothing should catch me off guard because it's already told me the skills that I'm gonna be tested on. You will need additional practice, but this is a great start, which will allow you to prioritize the skills that you need to start with first. As we continue to talk about the Excel exam, I wanted to go ahead and jump into Gmetrics. And the reason for that is it does such a great job of simulating the testing environment. This practice exam has seven projects, just like you would have on the certification exam. In addition to that, it simulates the testing environment further by giving you an overview for the project, which when you take the exam, I would just kind of gloss over. It's not really necessary for the projects that you're working on. 
For this project, it has five different tasks. You could be asked anywhere from four to seven tasks on the exam. The interface for Gmetrics is very similar to what you'll see on the certification exam. It is a little bit different, like mark completed and mark for review. I believe that they're up here where the tasks are. And so the interface is just a little bit different, but it gives you a lot of the same features that you will see on the certification exam. One of the differences to that, though, is that this summary button, which allows me to look through all of the projects within this exam, you won't have access to that on the actual certification exam until you've completed all seven projects. And then if there's time, you'll have the ability to go back through. I'm thankful that my students have access to the software. I do have a textbook. I view the textbook as laying a foundation, but Gmetrics really puts the walls up. It puts the roof on. It allows students to really just put everything together and then practice their Excel skills in this simulation so that they can practice their time management and working through similar conditions that they'll see on the exam. Let me go ahead and talk about Gmetrics again just for a second. If you have access to this software, something that I make my students do is earn a 900 or better on the actual test before I let them take the certification test. The reason for that is because I know that in order to get that 900, which most of them don't get on the first time that they take the test, it's going to push them to learn in areas that they weren't familiar with. And if they push through and they struggle and they learn it, then when they come across it on the certification exam, that's going to be their knowledge and they're not going to get tripped up on similar questions. So I would encourage you to try and get the best possible scores, 900 or better on Gmetrics. That way you are the best prepared that you can be for that exam. Let's go ahead and look at task three because I wanna talk about functions. Now, as I read through this question, it's having me do a function, but notice it doesn't tell me what function I need to use. I need to know that I see two things here. One, that I'm averaging out the review scores and that there's a criteria attached to that, and that's gonna be Y cubed 720. Now, after reading that question, I need to be able to know that the function that I need is called the average if function. Again, I go back to the exam page. It tells me every single type of function that I need to know. So as we talk about functions, people struggle with functions. We know it's not a huge part of the exam, but there's no reason that we should be caught off guard because of that exam page. Now, something that I would encourage you to do is because they're not going to tell you which functions to use is I would outline the functions that are on that page. And the ones that you don't know, I would write down the definition, which can be found in the function builder. In fact, let's pull that open. So I'm going to click this FX button here. As you see here in the function builder, it tells me what VLOOKUP is and it gives me a description down here. That way you don't have to guess. You can look and say, this is what the task is asking me to do. This is what the insert function button tells me that this function does. And so you can kind of put them together. You don't have to get all of the functions right on this exam, just most of them. So keep that in the back of your mind. My advice to my students is, if you're not immediately sure how to do a task on the exam, mark it for review and then move on. Don't waste a bunch of time on this task because I've seen too many students not pass the exam because they spent 10 minutes on one question and they weren't able to finish the exam. And oftentimes those students miss it by just like one or two questions. So if you're not immediately sure, mark it for review and move on. And if you've seen all seven projects, you can go back and look at the questions you've marked for review. One of the things about this exam that makes it difficult, yes, the functions and some of the tasks it's gonna ask you to do, but the wording of the question, and I've thought this about all of the Microsoft exams for 2016, whoever wrote the questions did a fantastic job of hiding what they actually want you to do in the task. They want you to know, based upon the phrasing of the question, things that you need to do. For example, we saw that they don't tell us which function to use, they just want you to know based upon the information in the task that you need to use the average if function. Something else that I noticed that they'll just kind of give you like a definition of a feature and expect you to know what you're supposed to do. Something that I noticed with this was with conditional formatting. It said something along the lines of an automatic formatting method. And based upon the task and what it was asking me to do, I had to know that I had to apply conditional formatting. You need to read those questions carefully. Something else that I noticed that they do on the exam is when you complete a task, what they'll do is on the next task, they will have you do something really similar to what you just did. And where you'll mess up on is that they change sheets on you. The task three, it was on the new releases, but task four, which is very similar to what you just did, is now on the pre-orders. And they're trying to trip you up on that. I've also noticed that on the different tables and charts. So make sure that you're fully reading those questions so that you don't do the wrong step on the wrong sheet or the wrong chart. 
I just pulled in a picture that a student made of me holding a championship belt. I don't know why they find it funny to Photoshop me, but I pulled this in for this reason. You get special tabs at the top anytime you bring in smart art or tables or charts or pictures. And you should be familiar with those special ribbons that you are given access to. But something I want you to look at closely is I'm gonna go ahead and click the size dialog box because it pops in this picture format pane and there are a lot of features, whether it's fill or different shadows or you can change the height, the width, add alt text, make some picture corrections. You should be familiar with this because what they're going to do in this exam, if they give you a question like this, is they're gonna make you dig deep. It might be a pattern fill, it might be some weird pattern in here and some foreground and background colors. I wanna encourage you, be familiar with paints like this. So that way you're not losing your mind when you're in the certification exam trying to find some random feature. And it's not gonna be on just the picture panes. It's gonna make you pull out some random chart that you've never even heard of before. If you're doing conditional formatting, it might be some random predefined feature or you're hunting and pecking for a specific custom feature. Just be aware that when they ask you a question, it's not gonna be that top level stuff. They're gonna make you dig to get the answer correct. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.